Welcome to PPR Podcast number 144, brought to you by the Strike Force. The star of the podcast sits to my right. I'm Paul Burtz, the star of the podcast. Bert. Yeah. Uh, whoa, we have a special, special guest today. We do. New head coach, Sean Lewis from San Diego State. Coach, welcome. Yeah, great to be here, guys. I have a first Bert. question. Yeah, quick. take it away. Coach, you've been to Illinois. Wisconsin, Ohio, and Colorado. Are you ready for this big winter storm we got coming tomorrow or no? I was joking here, right? The, the rain's coming, and, and, and it seems like I'm going to drive safe in the rain. I mean, you know, all my stops, and, and when I was learning up in Syracuse about a winter squall, that, that, that's, it's, I, I've, you know, completely different lifestyle. I think, I, I think I'm going to be okay. You're going to hear the be safe 100 times, and you're like, what are you talking about? It's drizzling. <laughs> that's the worst thing you've ever cracked me up when I first got here, too, Coach. Yeah. Uh, can you talk? I, I get it, it's a beautiful campus. I get that there's some money involved and I get there's a lot of sunshine. But what else appealed to you about this gig? Yeah, to me, it starts with the people. It'll always be about the people and the, the people that are right outside our front and back door from our campus in the, the perennial power high schools that we have, the great high school coaches that are here, the, the, you know, the great players. I think when you talk about where's the best high school football across this great country, there's only four states that can actually be in that conversation. And I've been fortunate to, to work in two of the four, in my opinion, and to now be here in California where the, the high school football is unbelievable and we're going to build our roster from that high school talent and our local hometown heroes like I'm a better coach every single year when I got really good players and to have them right outside <laughs> our front and back door you know that that, that was a, a very very appealing uh, aspect to this job for me and for our staff and we talked about that in the break room in Colorado you have to take a plane to visit any recruit here you can literally yeah. go five minutes down the street take an uber to go see a recruit <laughs> absolutely Just a much different place it is. I, was, I saw right, the, the biggest shock to me and, and you brought some quarterbacks in but um, is Jason Mitchell, the, the corner you just uh, stole. <laughs> but how do you get a kid like that who had, you know, LSU, Oregon, Notre Dame offers, um, went to Bosco? I mean, that's a pretty big take in, in your first week or two here. Yeah, I mean, for all the guys that we're going to get until they're officially ours tomorrow, I, I, I'll speak in really broad strokes <laughs> here. I understand but myself. <laughs> to, to be able to, again, have this past weekend in particular, our whole staff together and for – the, the young men that have come in, their families that have come in, and to be around our families and our staff that we've put together and to detail and outline our plan and to show them, and best we can in a 48-hour visit, how we will care for them, how we'll build you know, where they're at to where they're going and help them get to a place that they can't get to on their own. And then, you know, again, for our hometown heroes to be here and to go through the whole journey of their college process, the, the highs and the lows to where we know there's going to be some adversity no matter how talented they are to have their support group and for us to be a part of that and then also when they have these great moments to be able to share that i think all of that wrapped together is going to open some eyes that i don't need to go really far to accomplish all the things that i want to get done and i can do that right here on the mesa san diego is a 28th tv market it's the eighth biggest city in the united states Boulder, significantly smaller, and yet that's considered the national program, and San Diego State is, you know, let's face it, there's haves and have-nots in, in, in college football right now, and unfortunately, San Diego State is kind of straddling on the uh, have-not side as far as money. Okay. I, I know you want to change that, but or let me put it this way. The kids that you were going to be recruiting in Colorado, how many of those kids on the board there are on the board here at San Diego State? There's a handful of them, right? And it comes back to, to the relationships that we have, right? And again, for what each individual is looking for, right? And then it's our job also as a staff to show our community the, the vision that we have, the opportunity that we have here with, shoot, over 300,000, you know, Aztecs alums right here in the greater San Diego area to, to pack Snapdragon, to tell our story and to build out from where we are. So do you think there's a sleeping giant here that just needs to be awoken? Yeah, we're, we're going to turn this thing into a beast, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And You're going to turn it, it into way. a have, I think. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yep, that's the expectation, and, and that's the work that I look forward to doing with the staff. Now, knowing you, I mean, I remember Kent State that one year with 600 yards a game, 50 points a game. You're, I mean, it's always this fast-paced offense. So was there any apprehension here? Because it's been in the DNA of San Diego State so long. Old school, run the ball, play defense, whether it's Brady, Rocky Long. Yeah. Any apprehension that it's so much in their DNA that, that it's going to take time to change that? No, because <laughs> if you run it all the way back, right? Like it, the, yeah, way back. <laughs> Brian Sipes. Right? I mean, Eric Coriel. Eric Coriel. Yeah. I mean, they slung yeah. that thing around. Excellent right? point. <laughs> so, <laughs> so That's the original DNA. You're right. <laughs> the, the, the fun point and the fun opportunity that we have is to take, okay, the Air Coriel with what was done way back when and how he revolutionized the game throwing the ball and, and bottle 
that magic up, which has happened here before. Obviously, the recent success of elite defenses blend the two, play elite special teams, and create a unique brand of football that people are dying to get to the stadium on Saturdays to where the local kids want to stay home. And it's a, it, it's in general speaking, it's, it's fun, it's energetic, it's explosive, it's hard-nosed, it's physical. It's all the things that make this great game beautiful that we get to build out. But there was zero apprehension about, well, hey, it's been defense and now there's going to be this offensive guy. Again, it's, it's being clear and opening up the doors. All the guys that have built this program before, like, come on back. When we have spring practice, it starts on March 12th. If you're an Aztec, I mean, blood in, blood out, come through and see what we're doing and what we've been about. It's going to be outstanding. Sean, you have an aura about you. I, I get the hire right now. I mean, I can't. I, you, is this an acquired trait, or is this in, is this a product of just who you are? I love what I do, right? And and, and to be able to do it here with the staff that I've been able to assemble, um, I, this is me, and I'm going to be myself. And whether it's here with y'all or, or in a recruit's home or engaging with our community, I'm very thankful and very humbled to. To be the leader of this unbelievable program, I don't take that for granted. And, you know, I think it's my duty to, to be the chief energy officer of Aztec football and to well. give life to, to everyone that's within this program. I guess, because, I mean, we talk about NIL so much. When you go into a recruit, do you identify what their motivation is to go to school? Because some, let's be honest, it's money. And, and do you just give up then? Or how's the recruiting go nowadays? Because there's so many different factors. Before, when yeah. you played, I played, it was just... This is where I want to go to school. I like this coach best. I'm going <laughs> right. there. But now there's other things pulling at you. Yeah. Do you kind of identify that before you start getting deep into it? We have to, right? I, I think we, we need to know inside out, first and foremost, what we're looking for in terms of a player and do they have the genetic makeup to win Mountain West championships and compete in the college football playoff. Like that's the, that's the ante up to be able to play at our spot and with our level, right? And so once we know that we've identified that, that this young man can play at an elite level consistently, now who are they as a person? What is their makeup? What makes them tick? And what are their priorities that they're looking for in an institution? Is money going to be a piece of it and that compensation package it because of where we are in 2023 and moving into 2024? Absolutely, right? But if that's at the top of their list, me and that family aren't going to get along. Like it, it's, it's, it's not going to work. And I may have to, you know, compete against that young man one day out of the year, but I'd rather worry about that one day out of the year than having him in my building 365 days out of the year. So as we get to know the family, as we get to know what their priorities are relative to what our priorities are, there has to be a blend. There has to be a marriage with that because for me and my staff, it's not just about these four or five years that we're going to spend together on the Mesa. It's, I want to be a part of that young man's inner, inner circle. So 10, 20, 30 years down the road, he's sending me pictures of his firstborn. He's sending me pictures of his house. He's calling upon me at the middle of the night to ask for life advice the way that former players have because from the initial relationship when we started recruiting them to be a part of our football family, now we're interwoven for life. And to me, that's what it's about. You, you brought up something interesting. Are, are, is there times when you get to know a kid that you want, and as you get to know him, you realize you don't want him? I mean, does that happen? Yeah, it's a part of the so process. So it cools both ways. It really does, right? And, and I think that's one thing for you know the, the listeners and the fan base and everyone to know, whether they're going to come be an Aztec or, or not, all the young men that are listening, right? Like, when you come on campus, the the staff and, and the, the program that you're going to visit, they're evaluating you just mm -hmm. as much as you're evaluating them. So yeah, you think you know someone, and you know, especially as, as the head man, like I told our staff the other day, I was like, I don't want to recruit ghosts. You might be out in the area, you might offer them, and you might have a relationship with them, but we need to get them to campus. We need to get them to practice. We need to get them to a junior day. We need to get them to an event so that I can get to know them and so that we can have real meaningful relationships to know, again, who are we getting each and every single day because every day they're in our building is going to count, right? right. And we're going to get measured on those 12 days that truly matter in the fall, but how we go about our business and who that young man is and how he blends within our locker room is critically important. Now, is this all learned? I mean, because you're like Tony Robbins now, but is this... <laughs> I, wanna, I, I mean, I'm sitting there listening. I'm like, so I'm going to get my number for life coaching. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I go back to Kent State. I think you were like 30, 31 when you got yeah. hired there. Yeah. Those kids are 23, 24. Yeah. How was that? I <laughs> like, had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Right, relative, right? Like, again, I'm going to challenge our kids and challenge everyone within our program to 
improve and compete each and every single day. Like that's our be the alpha mantra is that you gotta be able to lead your own life. You gotta be able to know where you're going. You gotta have some self-awareness of how you can close those gaps. So I think back to that first time I sat down in the head coaching chair and we were kind of talking about the whirlwind that we're in right now. I mean, I remember calling Coach Babers, who is a fabulous mentor of mine, a San Diego native, actually, mm -hmm. right? And, and like, <laughs> just, you know, picking up the phone yeah. at one of these, at the end of one of these long days, just going, I now get why when I was your coordinator, I, I never saw you for some days. You know, like, he's like, yeah, you don't know what you don't know until you sit down. And so, fortunate to have Coach Babers, fortunate to have many people within this profession, Coach Alvarez, I can call at any moment in time, Coach Buzz Williams down at Texas A&M basketball has become an unbelievable friend that will pick up the phone and, and guide me through some things. So I'm fortunate to be around a lot of really, really smart people, humble enough to know that I don't know a whole heck of a lot and, and just continue to grow and evolve as we do this thing, you know, so we can, again, myself and my staff can be the best for our kids. Well, some of the pieces are in place, though. I mean, you got a stadium that will yeah. shine a new stadium that's certainly going to raise eyebrows, right, when kids yeah. come through? Absolutely, right? We, we have some great infrastructure, right? And we have necessary tools that are needed to get a job done, right? You need to have that. And so very fortunate to, to have those, those um, items in place. But again, the, I think as we all learned kind of through COVID, right? Like I remember being in my building in, in 2020 um, and, and just going through, it was, like, it was like my window of time where I could be in the office solo. And as cool as our space was there that we had made ours, when no one else was in the building, that building was dead. It's the, it's the people within the building, it's the people that are gonna come to Snapdragon that are gonna make it an unbelievable right. home environment, right? The, the people bring life to the stuff and the energy and enthusiasm that our kids are gonna bring to the weight room and get underneath a bar and, and how they attack that work, that's what's gonna make our home and our things even that much greater. So, but very, very blessed to have the, the tools that we do have so we can build a championship team. You mentioned uh, tomorrow signing day, um, early signing day. What's yeah. I mean, you've been here a whole what ten days, two weeks. <laughs> what, what? How's that going to look? It's going to be exciting. You know, we got some again great local kids that ha have jumped in with us. We, we are, are going to be bringing in those 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 signing documents, the NLIs. You know, rapidly starting. Uh, you know, with all the local time. So I mean, it'll start early with some guys that we have in the Eastern time zone, all the way through to the Pacific time zone as we bring national talent here to the Mesa. But there's going to be some, some very exciting kids that I'm excited to coach and develop and, and be able to brag on officially tomorrow. What's the protocol when you go from one program to another program in such a close period of time? Are, are you obligated to, to not take kids that you were, you were recruiting, say, at Colorado? Are you, do, you have to not, do you have to leave them behind, or can you bring them? I think you're, you're transparent and you're open with everything, right? And, and you allow uh, individual kids, their families, to make the decision that they feel is best for them. I think that's the one good thing about where we're at. There's a lot of good things that are happening. I know a lot of it is, is negative at this point in time. Right. But with the portal and with the flexibility that families have, they are able to position themselves to be in a spot where they can align with people that they feel is going to be the best opportunity for them. So it's transparent with every single time I've made a move, you're, you're professional, you're up front, and, and you, you be you, and if it's right for other people and they want to come along, then so be it. And the reality is, I mean, they're going as much for the coach that they have the relationship as a school. I mean, when I got recruited, it was Joe Moore, the legendary offensive line coach. Yeah. If he would have left and went to Penn State that day, I would have followed him there anyway. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't go to Pitt. I mean, does that's that just... create ill will with your, like? Well, I didn't do it. But... <laughs> I know, but, but I'm just saying, does that create, does that, does that create hard feelings? I think we're all competitors and we all know the, the high stakes that recruiting and talent acquisition is, right? So you want to hang on to your guys, you better compete like crazy. And, yeah. and if you want to win at a high level, you, you got to win year round to have the roster that you need to to go chase these championships. And follow up on that. So it used to be recruiting, you get the letter of intent signed, that was the end of the show. Now it's this retention every single year. Is that, sure. is that a big. How do you control that? Because every year it's four or five guys are going, they're going to get thrown offers or they're going to transfer portal yeah. and, and then you got to replace them. And is it just a development thing and then, and then they get plucked by bigger schools? I mean, how do you solve that? I think, again, that goes back to the transparency and the relationships that you have and how you interact and um, add value, more so than just the monetary piece, but how mm -hmm. you add value as a head coach, a coordinator, a position coach, whoever you are within the organization so that that young person as they get to or maybe they're being enticed by other people, they just, you know, humbly go like, no, I'm really happy where I'm at. You yeah. know, it, it's, I mean, I, I think that's as simple as that and we kind of overcomplicate it maybe at times. Uh, Chip Kelly made national headlines following his uh, bowl game 
talking about revamping how college football. I don't know if you saw the. I did. Yeah. Your, yeah. your, your thoughts about Kelly's comments? I think it's smart. I think it's really well thought out. And I think as we continue to move through it, again, there's good, bad, ugly that's happening in our space. That. The, the, the pie is big enough for everyone. And so everyone needs to be able to have a fair and equal share of what is you know, uh, important to them and how we can put some parameters in place that make sense for all parties that are involved. And again, we're doing some things within the landscape that make sense for football, but don't make a whole lot of sense for, again, whether it's softball or you know, golf. It just, again, I think we need to have a little bit more foresight about how one decision for one sport impacts all sports. But Clearly, Coach Kelly's comments were very, very well thought out. Because we, we were talking in Bert's interview prior to you sitting down with Good Morning San Diego about uh, the NC2A data on people, kids that go into the transfer portal. And the, the, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And kids go in there thinking, hey, I'm going to get playing time, I'm going to get this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. And sometimes they end up never playing their sport again. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of promises that aren't being kept, right? And people are being enticed or they believe for whatever reason when adversity hits that, to your point, that the grass is greener. Like, you know, the, the grass is greenest where you water it. So, again, before you do anything and you make a decision, right, like every decision or every choice that we make is going to create some ripple events in our life. And so they better be very well thought out. But we got to be careful about always providing an exit just when things get hard because the beauty of this game, in my opinion, is that, you know, you, you need to look adversity in the eye and you need to grow from that. Like, we've all gotten better and we've all improved, whether it's as a player, as a person, because we've gone through some hardship and the deep, meaningful relationships that we have, like those groomsmen that I played with at Wisconsin, like, they became my boys and they're my truth tellers right now in my life because we went through struggle together. I know that when things got hard, they were going to have my back, I was going to have their back. And because of that bond, even now as, as husbands and fathers, when things get hard, we're able to be there for one another. And that's what I want to make sure that we protect and that we don't lose just because when things get hard, now I can Bam. hit eject yeah, and I can right. go somewhere else where someone's just going to tell me what I want to hear right. and not what I need to hear. Yeah, and then, and then we, it's, it's crazy because there's 25, 28, 3,000 kids in the portal. You know, 50 always works out for 75, and everybody right. focuses on them on social media. But the other 2,600 are, are in a worse place, in yeah. a worse town, in a worse everything. Correct. But yeah. yeah. I got to ask my Badger question again. Oh, yeah. When he was a young man, he was playing on the playing surface at Camp Randall. Mm -hmm. When I was a young man, I was cleaning the bathrooms as part of my high school football team so we could get free shoes from the Badgers. But we, can you, because he probably has never experienced it. Was the starters? You played at that small school on the East Coast. They made the starters clean or just the backups? <laughs> I was a urinal right. colonel. That means that I was a starter because I was warm. But it's a magical place. Yeah. Would you not concur? Yeah, it is a special place. I, I mean, I mean when, you would love to be able to bottle that and take it to Snapchat. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the traditions that have been created there over time have made that place very, very special, right? The, the winning then breeds to a fun place to be, which then leads to jump around to start the fourth quarter. And again, I look forward to putting our creative touches on how to get a consistently winning championship ball club on the, on, between the white lines that our fans want to come see and how we can make Snapdragon uniquely special in that regard you know, to where it is just like Madtown and Camp Randall and everyone's jumping around having a great time. What's your favorite Badger memory? Uh, Probably my senior day when we beat the heck out of Michigan and my wife's a Wolverine, so now <laughs> she had to stand there at the 50-yard line as I was running out, and we got that big win. And now, you know, for her, the rest of our lives, I get to, to, you know, remind her of that whenever I can. It's been a while, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, but it is like, you know, I mean, that was a crit. When I got here from uh, Pitt, it was, it was, San Diego State was out there at Marshall Falk. They were all drawing us as chargers, and I always thought it was amazing because, I mean, you can go deep sea fishing in five minutes. You can go to Big Bear and skiing in two hours. You can go to L.A. You can go to Disney World. There's so many things to do. You can go to Tijuana. You can go anywhere. And, and people were, were choosing to do that yeah. because they were exciting. And I think that's really all they need. I'd, hold, I'd have my recruiting meetings on the sand, I think, Coach. Well, uh, <laughs> listen, we're going to keep this one short with the, with the pledge that you'll come back when your life is more sane, okay? Absolutely. Can't wait. All right. So uh, you got anything else you want to ask? Illuminati's, right?
Lou Malnati, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We're right. going to both be in Chicago this week. Portillo's big beef. All right, yeah. well, Coach, happy holidays. I think we're going to be at uh, a couple signings tomorrow that might even have your uh, name popping up. So if they do, yeah. we might give you a, drop you a text and say, hey, hey, hey. Perfect. Keep an eye on KSI and PPR because you're, we're going to become part of your life. You watch. Can't wait, guys. All right, PPR podcast number 144 is toast. Turn off the machines. Thank you, Coach. Oh, yeah, Pleasure. Yeah,